Don't worry, if you're feeling stuck, we all get stuck from time to time. But today, we're going to teach you how to get unstuck. Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner for coaches who want more success now. Today's episode number 66, How to Get Unstuck. Today's episode is brought to you by Marketing Thunder, marketingthunder.com. Powerful marketing training that really booms. Got some great trainers in there for you and you get seven days of full access right now for just $1 when you visit marketingthunder.com. I think you're going to love it. You're going to stay with it because it is amazing. Hello and welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. I'm excited today. I've got a great guest lined up for you, someone who I was really excited to bring on and uh, do an interview with because she is uh, very like-minded. We share a lot in common and uh, I think you're really going to like uh, my guest today. My guest today is Elizabeth Pearson and she's a speaker, a success coach and author of a forthcoming book, Manifesting Through the Mess, and I can't wait for that book to come out on the market. Sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Elizabeth is a money mindset expert specializing in helping women entrepreneurs and executives increase their income by at least an additional six figures within a year. After launching her coaching business part-time in 2016, while leading a skincare company as a C-level executive, Elizabeth left her corporate career, a career that provided her a multiple six-figure income, so that she could better serve her coaching clients. Having achieved six figures in her first year running the business full-time, Elizabeth continues to grow and support her clients who typically see significant improvement within just a few weeks of working with her. I invite you to go find out more about Elizabeth at elizabethpearson.com. Now, a quick note before we bring Elizabeth on, we had some technical difficulties, but that's okay. I've got a lot of fallbacks. Uh, The normal system that we use for doing interviews didn't work as planned today, but um, we brought her in via Zoom, and I'm going to play that for you right now. I know you're going to enjoy this interview. Enjoy. Well, I'm so happy today to have Elizabeth with us. Elizabeth, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Robert. I'm super excited to be here. You know, the first thing I did when I went to your website, elizabethpearson.com, is I went and looked for a video because I wanted to see what you were about. And, and a lot of people will um, do that these days, more so than just reading a bio. And it was so wonderful to see your video and, <laughs> and uh, you know, watch what you were doing and hear your content. And I said, Elizabeth, you need to be on my podcast. <laughs> you know, it was, just, it was just one of those things I had to do. Um, you talk about a topic that is uh, very near and dear to so many people, and that's getting unstuck. And uh, it's one of those things that I hear a lot with coaching clients. It's like, yeah, I want to take my business to the next level. I don't know what to do. I want to make my relationship better, but I don't really know what to do. Uh, so in my estimation, I look at that and I say that's stuck. But yeah. I want to start with that, uh, that concept of being stuck and how do you know you're stuck? Well, Robert, that's a great question. And I really feel like you know when you're stuck, when you feel this kind of burning inside, right? You feel a restlessness. The things that used to be good enough for you are no longer good enough for you. Something inside is really begging for you to take action, raise your standards, and improve upon one aspect of your life. Sometimes it could be multiple areas. It could be your career. It could be relationships. It could be self-care. It could be all of these things. But yes, when clients finally get to the point where they have acknowledged that this might be something that they need help with, it's usually because they're in a place of feeling powerless. And so that really is the lowest, in my opinion, that's the lowest place you can be is when you feel stuck because to me, that means you feel powerless. So Exactly. And then when they're, when they're feeling powerless is when they start to get discouraged, they start to feel yes. depressed, and, and then it all starts to fall around them. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And once you start to notice things not going your way, mm-hmm. and you shift your focus onto that, what you focus on expands, at least in my experience working with clients, so you can really feel like the hole is just getting deeper and deeper. Oh, and deeper. yes. Yes. And so you really need a momentum shift. We need to come in and really shake up whatever mindset blocks you have going on, whatever is telling you that you don't deserve better than this, whatever is really keeping you in that fear-based mentality and focusing on the lack, we need to have somebody come in and pull you out. And a lot of times, well, a lot of times people feel bad. They say, why can't I just do this on my own? And I say, 
Well, because we're all human. And if you've trained your brain to think a certain way that now you have a deep seated belief that you don't deserve better, it's going to be near impossible for you to be able to have an objective point of view and pull yourself out of it. Right. And, and that's one of the, the challenges is that we are uh, humans and we get to the point where we've gotten to as far as our belief systems, as far as our rules, our values are going to take us. And then you say, okay, so I can't go any further with this. And that's exactly what happens is, is yeah. you start to, you know, start to curve down a little bit. And then you need somebody like you to come in and say, okay, Here's what's going on. Um, I love the idea of coaching. I'm super passionate about coaching, as you know. You probably yes. are as well. Yes. Because we get the opportunity to help people without being emotionally attached. Right. Right. And, and we get to see it a lot clearer than they do. Absolutely. Okay. And I really believe, too, that you can do it from a very compassionate um, perspective. I have a compassionate intention. Every time I speak with a client, even if it's just on a discovery call, there never should be in my mind, any kind of finger pointing or, you know, any sort of discouragement on how they got to where they are. I believe that they are right now, all is well. They're perfect in the moment. This is exactly what was supposed to be happening. We were brought together by a universal force, right? Stop me if I'm getting too woo-woo for you. But I believe that they should acknowledge that and be grateful, right? Because when we really start looking at everything through that lens of gratitude, your whole perspective can change and then your manifestations will change. But yes, I think that there are different coaching styles. Mine tends to be a more compassionate, holistic one. But at the same time, you will be held to um, some sort of standards that we've agreed upon when we first start working together, right? right. So there can be an <clears throat> compassionate accountability. Yeah, and um, I want to take you back to this idea of appreciation because I know a lot of people, Oprah talks about it, a lot of people talk about it, and uh, it's one of those things I know a lot of people, especially in the entrepreneurial uh, world, will kind of go, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, but I don't know your experience, but my experience working with very successful entrepreneurs, uh, oftentimes you might look at them and you might say, well, they're lucky because they have a great product, or they're lucky because they have a wonderful website, or they're lucky because they picked the right market. And then you might look at some others who are really successful and you go, how in the world did that person get there? Right? <laughs> right. It's like their website is horrible. Their typos all over it. Their videos are poorly lit. The sound is crappy, you know, yeah. horrible um, shopping cart. And yet they're doing one, two, three, four million dollars a year. Right. How is that possible? Right. Well, Gratitude, I agree right? with you. I think that um, they're probably manifesting those things into their life because they're mm -hmm. grateful for what they do have, right? Versus kind of nitpicking things. And I, I don't know about you, but I used to have a very conditional gratitude practice, right? It was like, I would be grateful for it if I really thought it was above and beyond what I felt I was entitled to. So there was this underlying level of entitlement, right? That if it, if it came to me, it was like, well, it didn't get here fast enough. It's about time <laughs> because I wanted that and I worked for that and I deserved that two years ago. And the, it was a beautiful thing, Robert, when I really started to realize that I'm not do anything, you know, nothing is um, out there, something that was created for me that I deserved in that moment without having that mindset shift towards gratitude, right? So the world opened up for me when I got grateful for every little thing, even, you know, tantrums with my children melting down, hardships of starting a business. You know, I love how you really beautifully say on your website that it can be really isolating, right, to these entrepreneurs out here, right? It's not for the faint of heart. And we might be really tempted to start comparing ourselves to others. I used to do that all the time. I'd be like, well, look at Rachel Hollis. She's amazing. And I'm working hard to write all these other people, right? These wonderful light workers out there. I would could start comparing. And I, it was really when I realized that in doing so, it was kind of breeding and ungratefulness right. because I was now toe tapping saying, when is it coming? but I don't have it yet. I deserve it. I'm, I feel the same way. I'm, you know, just as whatever. And when I was able to kind of put those blinders on, and that's what I tell my entrepreneurial clients too, is you really have to just be focused on yourself and making yourself great and not comparing to other people out there because that is just a recipe for disaster. Nothing, I don't feel like anything good can come from comparisons. 
if you're grateful that you saw a piece of content from them and you were able to learn from it and you receive it in a grateful nature versus um, trying to kind of pick it apart or feel like you could do it better or being competitive, I feel like then is when you really start to feel a little bit more peaceful and confident in your journey. Right. And then is when the magic starts, right? Is when you really focus on yourself and the gratitude um, that you're feeling. Everything really will expand. And this comparison thing is really, uh, someone threw gas on, the, on all of that when they came out with social media. Yeah. Because if you go scan through your Facebook feed, everyone's doing this and everyone's succeeding yeah. and everyone's making big sales and everyone's doing this and you feel like, but, 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 but how about me? What about me? <clears throat> what and about me? I have a different perspective now about that. And what I say is every one of us has that moment where we're going to have a win. Right. And what we're seeing is the culmination of everybody's wins. So right. what we're starting to, to receive as information is everybody's winning all the time, but they're not. Yeah. They're not. It may be one win a month, one win a year. It may be the first win in five years. But it doesn't appear that way when you look at that news feed. So it's really important. I love that, that um, idea that you brought up about not comparing yourself because it is so, so, so prevalent today. We're doing it so much more. Thank yeah. you, social media. Well, and I feel like too, at least in my experience, was that when I compared myself to other coaches or other entrepreneurs, and I would see that they were a little bit further along to your point, I don't know all the hardships that it took to get there. But it would also start to make me question myself. I would say, well, why does the world need another, you know, Elizabeth Pearson or whoever I was look, Brene or any of the people out there who are just really amazing. And then I would say, well, it doesn't matter if, if I do this because I can't add any more than what's already out there. It's so saturated. And it was really amazing. I had hired a coach, right, when I had started my coaching business. And she said this wonderful thing to me. And I think it was a stat that she pulled somewhere, but she says it takes an average of 13 impressions for someone to really grasp whatever message that you're teaching. She said, so it could start with a Rachel Hollis or a Brene or whatever. She goes, but as long as you're somewhere in the mix there, you're reinforcing this message of self-love and care and right. belief in your dreams, right? To all the entrepreneurs out there and the coaches who definitely were tapped on the shoulder by something greater than them to come and be of service to others. If you feel that calling, it's because that is your life's mission. It doesn't matter how crowded the field seems. They need you. Everybody does have something unique. And if you can, if you can be one of those people along the spectrum of the 13 impressions that it takes to change somebody's life or for them to really opt to believe, then it absolutely matters. And you really have a responsibility to yourself and all the people out there that need you um, to keep going. This is a big topic for a lot of people because I know there's so, there's so many coaches who are on the sidelines because of that yeah. exact reason. They look out there and they say, well, everyone else is doing it. Or look yeah. at Tony Robbins. Look how many people go to his seminar. Oh my God, right. You know, you look, he just had this one in LA last weekend and it was uh, 15,000 people there. There's yeah. no room for me out there in this marketplace, right? Right. And the truth of the matter is, is that we need as many of us as we can possibly get because not everyone loves Tony Robbins, believe it or not, right. people who don't love Tony Robbins. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> it is true. And, uh, you know, and, and not everyone's going to be able to work with Tony Robbins. I think he works with like five people a year one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so that's not going to happen. So guess what? Tony needs an army of yes. coaches out there to work with all the people uh, that are coming through that need that kind of assistance. So I love your idea, your, your uh, strategy there of looking at it and saying, you know, you have to be part of the mix. You have to be in there. You have to put your, your head in there because we make the mistake of thinking that we're not going to be successful unless we're as big as Tony Robbins. Right. You know, I'm not going to be successful unless I have 15,000 people at my seminar. And you want it today. And you want them today. And the truth <laughs> of the matter is his first seminar right. had nine people. They were all his friends. Wow. Right. And you look at that and you say, wow, that's a story, right? You look yeah. at how he grew it. And that's the trick. The trick is I was, I was teaching to for Learning Annex here in San Diego and up in Los Angeles for um, a couple of years when that was a big thing. And some nights there were three people in the room. Yeah. And normally they would cancel those seminars. I say, yeah, I don't cancel it. There are three people. I'm going to change three lives tonight. Yeah. And that was enough for me. Some nights oh, I had 100 awesome. people in the room and it didn't matter. It was like, I know that I'm there for those people who are showing up. And that's the way you look at it. You look at it from that perspective and stop comparing. Uh, right. The truth of the matter is, if you have one person in your, in your audience that you can affect and impact. Yeah, I was just going to say too, you know, right. when you say that, 
you did seminars and they were small in the beginning and so did Tony, but you knew that you were affecting at least those people in the room. It's my belief that those people are drawn into that room, right? For a certain reason. And maybe they needed a little extra attention and focus from you that night. So it was, you know, meant to be. And, and I say too, you know, specifically like um, I focus on coaching women who feel stuck or are in male dominated fields. And it's because that's what I lived, right? So yeah. my story will align with certain people. And to your point, like with Tony Robbins, everybody feels a comfort level with whoever they seek out, whether mm -hmm. it be a coach or any sort of mentorship or another entrepreneur that you feel like you want to model after. It's because they have something unique, right? So my story will be able to help the women that I help um, and the entrepreneurs that I can mentor, but it might not be a fit for somebody else, right? Yeah. So I feel like that's a huge takeaway too, that it was a lot longer than I hoped for me to really let that sink in, right? That I did have something to offer. And I think at the end of the day, it comes down to a question of self-worth, right? Do you really believe uh, what you're selling, right? Do you really believe in yourself and you believe that you can really get results for people? And I think once you really believe that is when clients start flooding you, you're on a wait list as I am, and you have people seeking you out to mentor them, which is incredibly amazing, right? When you think of where you were just a few short years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, the, that's the thing. It's like uh, you look at your own stuff and when you're looking yeah. in the mirror, sometimes you don't have a lot of confidence. Right. But you know, the truth of the matter is you have a lot of value. And that's one of the things I work with my, my clients on is, okay, where's your real value? And what do you believe it to be? Because you don't believe in your value. No one else is going to believe in it either. <clears throat> so it's always got to start there. And yeah. then once you start to see that, you know what, the person who doesn't know quite as much as, as you looks to you as their hero. Yeah. At least for that little period of time when you're bringing them up to that next level. Um, and, and if you can get that picture in your mind and say, you know what, there are people who know less about X than I do yeah. and I can go out there and I can help them at least get them to my level then they're going right. to pass me and they're going to need other mentors along the way but yeah. I don't I'm not focused there yeah I want to focus on those people that I can bring up at least to my level and you're that a part of the process exactly yeah for sure yeah so tell me a little bit more about um you tend to focus primarily on women yes right? your bio yeah and uh what I want to know is do you see differences between women getting stuck and men getting stuck? I do. And it's funny because I have um, had some males reach out to me and I actually have a call today with one. And it's not that I don't you know, want to work with men, but I feel like I'm uniquely um, capable of helping women. And I feel like there are definitely very specific demands on life, right? And expectations mm -hmm. and standards that we hold ourselves up to, issues that we struggle with that might uh, differentiate from what men do. So I feel a little bit more dialed in to be able to help women with that. But I think women, especially working moms, I work with a lot of um, director to C-suite level working moms, and it's, can, it can be really um, confusing and draining. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I lived that struggle for a lot of years. I was in sales for wonderful companies, startups to big corporations that and they tried to be as supportive as they could. But I think when you, you know, have a type A or whatever you want to call it, uh, personality, you're trying to perfect every area of your life. And when you do that, it really is a recipe to, to really let yourself down, right? Mm, you're going to be the first yeah. person that you bail on. You're going to give everything to your kids, your husband and your job. And then at the end so of the day, yeah. right, there's nothing in your cup left right. for yourself. And Been you know, there, I, done that. Yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> and you know, you see all the wonderful things on Instagram, like, oh, treat yourself and all this stuff. Well, self-care is not a bubble bath and a glass of wine. Self-care is really living your authentic self every day and tuning in to what messages your intuition and your 75%, you know, non-form energy is, is telling you. And when women come to me, a lot of times they're just completely, they're just they're empty. They're empty of energy. Wow. They're empty of inspiration. And to your point, they're really starting, their soul is starting to stir and say, 
uh uh-uh, no, I keep tapping you and telling you to go go this way and you're not listening, you know, and you're, you just continue down this road of whatever it is, unfulfillment. You know, a lot of times it's a career that they kind of defaulted in after college. And I'm sure you've seen this with lots of uh, clients as well is that they start to go down this unfulfilling road Mm -hmm. and then they get so far down the road that they feel like it's too late to turn around. And I keep saying, if you're going down the wrong way on a one-way road, at some point, stop and turn around. Don't keep going just because you think you should, or you've got your master's in that, or your MBA, or whatever you did to get there. If it's not working for you anymore, then it's really time to examine that and change it. So that's kind of the state that they come to me in. And men typically bring different pressures, right? A lot of pressures of obligation to provide, whether it be for them, their family or their parents or, you know, or maybe there can be some external standards that they have, right? As far as a certain level, they should be at their job, a certain level of financial wealth they should have attained by a certain age. So it just seems like there's very Uh, different at the end. Obviously, we're all, you know, really kind of going through the same struggles, but at least when I'm on the phone with them, they seem very different. So it just is easier for me to relate to the women's struggle. It's interesting because we look at um, life and you say, okay, at 20 years old, now you're making a decision for the career that you're going to have for the rest of your life. It's bananas. And it's like, well, how do you do that? You know, how, how do I know? I still haven't decided. And I'm right. And, and we shouldn't. <laughs> I remember being a senior in college and uh, maybe it was a sophomore when you had to figure it out. And I was like, wait, I'm 19 and I have to figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of my Can't life. Do it. It, it do seemed it. crazy. Yeah. Um, but so many people, Robert, I'm sure you've had experience with this. They pick something, they go with it. Maybe they pivot a little bit. You know, for me, it was sales, right? I just, I got an internship at Vitamin Water uh, between my junior and senior year. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to do sales because I was good at that. (laughs) And so I ended up doing sales and I switched it up. I went to health and beauty. I went to different areas, right? Right. Searching for maybe this type of sales will be more fulfilling. But it wasn't because at the end of the day, you know, I'm on the phone with my girlfriends trying to help them through whatever is going on or I'm trying to build other people up. And that was my calling. That was what you know, I should have been doing the whole time. And that's okay. It took me a while to figure that out. But then I think, you know, once you get clarity, then you can then watch out. But I think that's the struggle, right? It's getting the clarity. Yeah. And how do you get that at that age? And, and, you know, from yeah. our, our school training, our schools are really, uh, you know, really from the industrial age and they really train right. us to be employees of large companies and right. you know, be, be the cog in the, in the bigger wheel, if you will. Yeah. And they don't really let you have an opportunity to explore who you are. Um, right. And, you know, from a coaching perspective, what we really do is teach people how to deal with emotions more yeah. than anything. That's the number one thing. And you, I asked the question, I said, so you went through school. I, you know, went, I have enough college credits to have a master's degree. Yeah. Not one time did I have a, a course on emotions. Not one. Right. Now you can imagine, you know, you're a teenager, you're depressed, you're angry, you've got all this emotion coming up and absolutely no training, no tools whatsoever to deal with it. Well, you're being told they're irrelevant, right? Your, your, your emotions aren't really something you should pay attention to. Right. You should just do whatever your career advisor or your parents or what is the responsible thing. You know, I have at least four clients who went to law school and they never ended up using it. And it's wow. because they just thought that was what they were supposed to do. That's what they were, and, they were pressured into, yeah. They were. And I was like, wow, that is a pretty big sacrifice for it not to be aligned with anything. One woman told me she sat down in class the very first day and it was like, oh no, like this is not what I want to do. But she struggled and went through the entire process, graduated, took the LSAT. I mean, like all of it. And I, wow. It's, it's unbelievable. But so many people have really followed these paths uh, because they feel like they should. It's what I should do to be an outstanding member of this community or to make my parents right. proud or to live up to these expectations. And I love these kind of conversations. I love the explosion of podcasts now because people can have real discussions about what the real priorities in your life 
can be and should be. That's that's the the winning formula here for yeah. uh, for what we're doing because we're not beholden to you know network standards and you know in yeah. the past you actually need a license to be on radio. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like well now anyone can have a wonderful a show, right? Yeah, yes. and it was and and even up to about ten years ago, if you wanted to get in front of the media, you really need to beg them to get on, get on television, right. get on radio. Well, that still kind of happens, right? Yeah, for the most part. But you know what? There's this whole world of podcasting now and it's exploded over the last couple of years. And there's so many opportunities for you to get the word out. And like I said, you don't need a huge audience. You need the right audience. Yes. And the right audience could be 50 people, literally. Right. You're totally right. That's a lot of coach. Well, you need to reach those 50 people who are going to resonate with your message. And that's it. Don't worry about the rest of it. It'll flow from there. I always tell my clients too, I say it's on their, it's on its way. And I say that for, and that's a Dr. Wayne Dyer, you know, wonderful nugget of wisdom there. But I say that for people too. He or she is on his way. Some people are really desperately trying to fill positions within their company. And then I say they're on their way. You know, if you really do believe that your tribe or your customer or your clients are coming to you and that if something doesn't work out with a client or a buyer or something that you really, really wanted, really, really wanted and hope for it, it's, it's that old adage, right? Rejection is God's protection. And I say that to my husband all the time. Sometimes I'll get a client and I'm like, really bummed that she didn't come on board because I really felt the connection with her. And, but I remind myself that maybe that wouldn't have worked out and then she would have taken the place of someone else who's waiting to work with right, me, exactly. you know, or something like that. So it, it's a wonderful way to look at it. But for all the entrepreneurs and the coaches who, like we talked about earlier, want that tribe, they want to build their tribe and they want it yesterday. If you can really just relax in the peace that they are on their way, maybe they're just not ready to hear your message because it won't land with them yet, but they're coming. And if that, I believe, if that is your intention is a pure whole intention of trying to spread joy to make this world a better place, as cliche as that sounds. Then <laughs> but it's real. <laughs> it is. But then they, they will come to you. Yeah. If you just really, if you can talk yourself into believing that they're on their way, it's on its way, it will come. Something I picked up from Abraham, which was extremely helpful. There's always a nugget when you attend yeah. or listen to their CDs. There's always something that'll just ring really true. And it was an event they did in San Diego here. And she called it vibrational advertising. And I was like, oh my God, that I is that. so perfect, right? Yes. And what she was talking about is like, you are the person, you're going to vibrate with the answer. Yeah. And who you're going to attract is the people who have the question. And it really is true. It's like, that's what we are as coaches. We have answers, yeah, right? We have answers sure. to a lot of things. We can help you break through and get to the next level and fix your relationships and fix your career path and help you with you know, spiritual stuff and health stuff. And we've got all these answers. But nobody knows that if you're not talking about it and putting it out there and being in that right. vibration all the time. And the moment you start doing that, the people who have the questions that you have the answers to, they come to you. They totally, they, they totally manifest. And- uh, we we both you know are a bit of you know Abraham junkies, but yes, I love that, and I've seen it happen, and I'm sure you've seen it happen in your life too. Yeah. I think when you really do believe that, and you are setting it out right, whether it's with great content or appearing on aligned podcasts, or there's a way that you're adding value to other people, and you know, I I, I love giving free content, right? I believe that that is kind of the, the bottom barrel of what you can do, right? If you have all of this knowledge, start, start spreading it around, start yeah. advertising it. And then to your point, they, they will come and they will come when they're ready, right? Once they get to that point where they're actually ready to make change, um, they will come. And one thing I always ask clients on calls is, you know, is this a now thing, right? And you mm. either have a yes or yes. no. Right. Because you're either ready and you're like, yep, yeah, let's do it. We're, we're moving forward. I need to get out of this place I'm in. Or are you like kind of kicking the tires, like looking around, maybe you're not totally uncomfortable yet and you're not really ready to make an investment. Don't worry, it'll come. <laughs> yeah. I need to be listening. You can totally steal that. Ask that. Is this a now thing? Because I'll tell you what, it will really uh, bring some clarity to you as well. I'm like, is this a good fit for me? And, and that was the number one thing that was hard was when I had to start, you know, respectfully walking away from clients that wanted to work yes. with me. Mm-hmm. 
And that can be really hard, especially when you're starting out and you're building your coaching business. You'll take anybody you can get. But I can tell you, I did that one time. I did it one time and I have not done it again because it didn't, it wasn't the result that I wanted. And I now see that there was no way it was ever going to be that result. It wasn't a now thing. It wasn't something that she was committed to. And that broke my heart and I beat myself up about it. And I just wanted, I just wanted her to have the transformation, right? It was like this, it was almost like a mothering thing, right? But I'm dragging this horse to water. Oh, she yes. She doesn't want Number it. one mistake coaches make. <laughs> Total, well, I learned it. Yep. And so I'm grateful for her now because she taught me that it's better for me to walk away if I don't feel like they're really ready. If they aren't listening to that vibrational advertisement and feeling it in their soul that it's time for a change and it might be scary, but you're there to help them through it then there's, there's nothing else you can do there. You know, you just have to wait and be really picky with who you work with. It just reminds me of a sort of a mantra of mine that's been here, God, since I started coaching back in 1995 um, that I learned from Tony Robbins. And he says, how many coaches does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> just one, but the light bulb's got to want to change. Right? <laughs> so you remember that as a joke, because it's funny, but you remember that. Yeah. That's been, that's been a mantra of mine forever. And it's like, when I get on the phone with someone or I meet them in person or they're at a seminar and they want to hire me, I really do a lot of check-in to see if they're really ready. Are you in enough pain yet? You know, right. they, they have, they have to be a motivating factor for them. Otherwise they're just going to come. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And you don't get any joy out of that. And they certainly yeah. don't make any progress. And that's so great, Robert. And I ask, I, I think about it too. I think about what is the reward you're getting for being in this situation? Because there's some sort of reward, Always. otherwise you wouldn't Always. be in it. And mm -hmm. whether it's people who are struggling to get healthy, what reward are you getting from being 30 pounds overweight? Well, it's the freedom to eat whatever I want, you know, in the moment, right? It's giving into indulgence. It's, it's whatever there is. Um, but are you in enough pain to walk away from that? Give up whatever is serving you in this space for the potential of something much better. And to your point, whether it's a lot, I mean, a lot of the women I work for with, with its career, um, but are you uncomfortable enough to leave, you know, without your net, you know, or whatever? Like, are you really ready that if you got some people, some women get job offers and they still, it's like their dream job, right? And they still won't take it because they've been working somewhere for 15 years. And <laughs> I'm like, loyalty bug, yes. <laughs> but they're uncomfortable. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, this, this is, this is the moment. This is a, a, a you know, a, a tea in the road, whatever, a fork in the road. A fork in the road, yeah. You have to decide. Mm -hmm. You have to, you're either going to stay in this comfort zone of mediocrity or you're going to try something different and have unlimited potential. Yeah. And oftentimes when they're, when they're stuck there, it's because the pain isn't high enough, high enough. Right. And right. when the pain gets accelerated and uh, one of the things that we do in, uh, you know, the training I got from Tony Robbins was NLP and you start mm -hmm. to future pace it for them. Yeah. Okay. How do you see yourself in three years still stuck in this position? Was it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? Great. How about five years from now? What does that look like? Then you bring it to a point where it's like, oh no, I've got to do something. I don't want to go yeah. down that path. You know, you just show yeah. them what the road looks like and they tell you, you don't tell them, they tell right. you what it looks like. Okay, well, great. Time you're so right. And, and one thing that I do, especially with a lot of um, the women that I coach, if they're mothers, I say, so what are we modeling for our children here? Because honestly, Robert, that was why I lit a match to my last life and said, I can't look my girls in the eyes and tell them you can be whatever you want to be. And then I'm not walking the walk. It's, it's, I'm teaching them something different than what I'm telling them. Mm -hmm. So for all the parents out there who are starting their business or they're starting, you know, to coach and it's, you know, it's a slow start like it usually is. You're doing something much bigger than you can even understand right now. Because once you say, these are the standards for myself, they're up here. You're showing your children that you're showing your significant others, any relationships, your friends. I mean, those have been the rallying uh, team that's been behind me are my girlfriends who were in the same situation I was before, mm -hmm. which they thought was enviable, right? Like, gosh, you're making multiple six figures. You get to travel. It was this fabulous life, right? They thought. And On so, yeah, did you don't know what the, what's inside the package, but the wrapper looked nice. And it, and it was good. I, I worked with amazing people, but it wasn't enough 
that I'm not settling. That would have been settling, just staying in that life, right? That wasn't good enough. I had an entrepreneurial spirit. And if you're out there and you've started your business, it's because there's a reason. You either are an entrepreneur or you're not. I mean, I feel like that's a pretty black and white thing for people. You're either have always dreamed about being your own boss. Absolutely true. Or not. Yep. And if you and it's okay if you haven't. That's fine too. Mm -hmm. But if you feel like that's what your calling is, then you have a responsibility to yourself, to everybody in your life to show them that, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to listen to my heart and I'm going to go after it. And then I think once you really declare that and you start putting the steps in place and taking Mm -hmm. action, the universe says, hmm, okay, I believe you now. You're, You're for real. So then they start sending you all of this wonderful Um, you know, clients and business into your awareness and more thoughts for innovation and content. And it really does, you know, as Oprah said, you, you get in the flow, you get in the vortex and you really do start reaping the benefits. But the universe, I feel like tests you. And if you're at the dark night of the soul or the hero's journey, and you're feeling like I'm sitting in front of my computer all day, I'm not helping anybody. Nobody's listening. I have no following. What is the point of all this? Well, there is a bigger role, right? And it could just be your kid who's looking at you. Yeah. Like I talked to my daughter, my six-year-old Delilah in last night and we were talking about, she wants to be a singer. And so, you know, we look up to Beyonce and the other night she said, I want Beyonce to come to my show, not me go to Beyonce show. And I loved it. Right. And then I'm tucking her in and I had to explain how daddy was on a work trip. And she, she goes, how come he has to do that? And you don't really do that anymore. And I said, well, mommy is mommy's boss. So nobody tells mommy she has to get on a plane if she doesn't want to get on a plane. You know, if I chose to do a workshop or something, that's my choice. And she just looked at me and it was like, it clicked Robert. Like, and it wasn't shaming dad. Dad is amazing. And thank God he does that because it allows, you know, us this wonderful time together and all of this. But it was, it was teaching her. Like, I feel like she finally got it. Like, all this that I'm doing is as much for them as it is for me. Yes. So think of that, right? Think of your why, whatever the picture is, whether it's your, your squad who is rooting you on to succeed in those moments where you really feel like self-doubt is winning out. If you can go back to those moments and use it as energy just to get through that day, then you're, you're working towards something bigger. Yeah. And, and uh, Esther is always saying that words don't teach and we try to teach our kids with words, but they're really looking at our actions. They're looking at what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And that was brilliant of you to have that, that uh, awareness of that to say, okay, you know, I want my kids to be self-sufficient. I want them to be entrepreneurial. I want them to know that they can set their own path, but I'm not doing that. So what, what lesson am I really teaching? And they're watching what I'm doing, not what I'm saying. Right. Well, that's the thing is that sometimes I uh, curse. <laughs> I just do. And I would, you know, really try to tone it down around them, which is great, right? But my husband would say like, don't do that, you know? And, and then one day, sure enough, you know, my three-year-old like drops an S-bomb and I'm like, oh no. And I said, <laughs> you can't say that. And she goes, but I heard you say it. And it was like, she had me, you know, Robert? I was like, so if she's- She won. <laughs> on the very lowest level, right? Just language. But she is oh seeing, gosh. right? If 97% of our communication is nonverbal, mm-hmm. she's seeing me either dropping her off in the morning like, oh, I have to get on another soul-crushing conference call about things I don't care about, or energized because I get to talk to you today, and then I get to mm-hmm. meet with my clients who I absolutely adore. This is the mommy that she should see, not the mommy Brilliant. who is getting through the day. Brilliant. I love it. Absolutely. You know? absolutely. You're so right. And uh, that message alone makes this podcast worth $100,000 to anybody who's listening, honestly, <laughs> because so many don't do that. And yeah. it takes courage. It's not an easy thing to give up the comfy lifestyle as you did. No. Um, you know, the money is great, you know, and it, it may not be the happiest place for you, but the money is there. It brings you a lot of security. Yeah. And that's the thing. People hang on to security, but they're willing to give up their freedom in exchange for more security. Yeah. And you kind of got to go well, yeah. right? I, I loved being able to say that I was in charge of all U.S. and global sales for this company. I was the one in the pencil skirt with the Starbucks at the airport. I felt validated because I had these things. I stayed in nice hotels. I mean, it was all of this stuff. You and felt important. Yeah, you felt I needed. felt important. Yeah. But it was a total false, false 
egoic, you know, um, facade. And I really, at the end of the day, I had imposter syndrome, like so many people struggle with, especially new coaches. Yep. Um, you know, you get your certification or maybe you don't even have that, but like, you still feel like, well, who am I to say anything to anybody else? But I'll tell you what, you know, I drop my kids off at school every day and I, I used to get in my car when I was just starting and I would call my husband crying and I'd say, I'm the slob in the yoga pants, you know, and I see all these other mommies with their stilettos and they're driving Maserati, you know, and they're doing, they're going to do something important. And Ryan, my adoring husband would just say, what you're doing is so much more important than anything they could be doing right now. But it didn't feel like that when I was going back to my office and, you know, working with clients societal or creating norms, right? content. Yeah, societal norms. And, and if you try to live up to societal norms, you're going to get yourself in trouble because those are always going to be wrong. They're always going to be off the right. base. So yeah. much better uh, to do what you're doing and to recognize, you know, I've got one person I'm going to speak to this afternoon and that person, life is going to be better yes. an hour after I speak to them than it was when they woke up this morning. Absolutely. And that's all it requires. You know, I don't need more than that. You know, life's so rewarding. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You are a great mom. I'm, I'm so proud of you. And uh, Aww, so thank you. To have, uh, the opportunity to meet you. And uh, we want to keep going here a little bit. I think we have a little bit more time. Yeah. Um, I try not to, to be short on our, our um, podcast episodes because I love the content. You and I could probably go on forever. I know. <laughs> And that's what the fun of it is that we're, you know, kind of on the same path and on the same uh, page with a lot of this stuff. And it's just brilliant uh, to be able to share it. So um, let's talk about this process of getting unstuck, because that's sort of the, the core of what we brought people here uh, to talk about today. And yeah, we know why we're stuck. We know there's certain comfort in being in a position that's not really that fun. But you know what? The bank account's full, so I'm okay or I'm 20 pounds overweight and that's okay too, you know, they're tired of putting up with it. All right. Now that we recognize that. Well, I think that's a great question. And when people reach out to me, they've already kind of cleared the first hurdle, which is realizing that they're stuck and that them just trying to will themselves out of it is not something that's right. working. Right. And so I have it on my website too. I say, are you going to fumble around with what you're doing for another five or 10 years? Or are you going to like get help and pull yourself out of this? So the first step is realizing that you're stuck and that you're to a point where you need to reach out to have somebody help and maybe draw upon some expertise to help you out of that. Um, and then for my program, I kind of split it up into two really kind of phases. The first phase is doing a lot of self-care and mindset work. So a lot of times we have these limiting beliefs, right, that are actually holding us back, this false evidence appearing real, right, uh, the acronym for fear. Fear, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I work with clients to say, okay, what are the things that we're telling ourselves? And then how can we start to kind of poke holes in whatever those lies are, whatever these false beliefs are, let's combat them with the truth. So if you say, I could never get another job or I could never be a successful entrepreneur. Well, the truth is, is that you actually really could because, you know, if you haven't realized it yet, big corporations are not in the business of charity. So they didn't bring you on because you don't know anything. They're not paying you $300,000 a year because you're no good. You're right. Actually, you really don't know anything. So we really start to kind of build up their confidence. And one thing that I do with them is I have them make a list of accomplishments, right? And so this can be something um, as far back as you can remember. And this can be personal wins that you've had or career wins. It could be just that, you know, you kicked smoking when you got out of college. Or for a lot of the women I work with, it's that you, you know, carried and went through labor with children, right? That is a huge, huge. accomplishment. Like, absolutely. And sometimes we just you know, those aren't, those aren't the shiny ones. So they tend to fall to the back. And a lot of times what we didn't do right or something that we tried and failed at is what's right here front of mind. So we really just kind of want to swap those. We want to bring to your awareness all of the things that you're great at, right? Oh, yeah. Where were yes. moments of pride in your job? Did you really kill a speech that you had worked on? Did you make an amazing deck to present? You know, I mean, all these things, right? Whatever it is in their career right then. It could be that you're in a wonderful relationship 
and you really did the work to keep it healthy and you grew with your partner and you support them. Whatever it is, I say, get a journal, make a master list of all of these accomplishments and there's nothing too small to put on there. And then every day I ask my clients to read through that list and I want them to put two more on there, one personal and one professional. And it could just be that you went to work when you didn't feel like it that day instead of calling in. It, it really could be anything on the scope. And then the thing is, Robert, as you know, once they start really seeing that every day and they're yeah. reminded of Reminded. how amazing they are, <laughs> yep. then they start to believe it. Yep. Right? As Esther says, a thought is or a belief is a thought you keep thinking. Mm -hmm. So let's just start thinking these wonderfully positive thoughts and of what could be, right? Let's be hopeful versus thinking these lies that we tell ourselves every day. And so many people are just really in this cul-de-sac of BS that their brain yeah. is telling them every day. And it's just not accurate. So we go in and we punch holes. And then once you start punching holes in those lies, the light can come in. You really start to believe it. Things start to manifest. And yeah. then the second phase is when we get super tactical. So we say, okay, it's great to think all of these things, but now we have to go in and make sure that your LinkedIn looks amazing. And I uh, wouldn't call myself a LinkedIn expert, but I think I'm more well-versed than the average Joe. I loved your show with Brian Basilico on LinkedIn and um, he was so right on, but it's such a powerful platform. It's so many people it is, yeah. completely ignored it. Um, so well, we get on Facebook. That's what happens. People well, don't look at right. it and think of it as Facebook and it's not. Well, and here's the other thing I realized too. I'm, I'm asking clients to work with me on their resumes and their LinkedIn, and there's so much resistance. They just do not, they would rather eat glass. They do not want to work at their resume. And I had a light bulb moment the other night, and I told my husband, I said, it's because they hate their job. Why would you want to sit and focus on all of the things and write it down, all of the things that you've done for your job, if you hate your job? You don't want to be anywhere near LinkedIn in your resume. Yeah. But... Unfortunately, those are the, that's your website. You know, I, people call me and I say, you know what, do you have a website? And they say, no. And I say, actually you do. And it's LinkedIn and it looks like crap. So we need to go and pick it up, clean it up, clean it up. Let's bring it up to the standards of what you are. And what's amazing is a lot of times we go back to that list of accomplishments. What are things that you've done? I think you can use LinkedIn in a way that you can really relay a lot of your personal attributes as well. And all of these skills can be transferable. And it's really how you craft your brand on those platforms. So to kind of wrap it up, a lot of it's mindset in the first. Mm -hmm. Once we get you feeling good and believing it, then we we bring it over and we get super tactical. I introduce them to my exclusive um, network of recruiters. So they're ones that I'm on a first name basis with, I've worked with for years. A lot of people don't have a really built up recruiter network. And recruiters yeah. are these wonderful assets, right? It's, it's sheerly a win-win for everybody. And everybody um, you know, can bring abundance into their lives just with forging of these, these uh, relationships with recruiters. So typically once we do that, that's kind of the secret sauce. And then it's amazing the transformations that happen once it, they it get is, to that point. Um, yeah. And, and uh, one of the things that I run into, I work with doctors, chiropractors, dentists, mm -hmm. that kind of thing a lot. And when you ask them, hey, tell me about you, radio silence. Right. Nothing. They don't want to talk about themselves. Mm. Right. And I, I kind of do this too. Sometimes I'm really need to, when I'm doing a, a presentation podcast or whatever, I really need to introduce myself and I don't do it. I kind of skip right out and go right into the content. And it's like, right. you can't do that because that's the piece that that's the connection that gives people. Why do I want to talk to you? Why do I want to right. connect with you when they're looking at LinkedIn? Why would I want to have this person in my network? They're mm -hmm. looking at that and they want to know. And if you can't put your best foot forward, then who's going to do it for you? Right. And Who if you Tony don't Robbins before he was Tony Robbins, right. <laughs> who was I just mean, a 19 year old kid who dropped out of high school. You know what I mean? <laughs> but who was anybody? Who was Sarah Blakely? Who was exactly. you know, Bill Gates? I mean, at some point, everybody is at the same starting point. Right. And I think to your point, when you can acknowledge that and be authentically yourself, that would be my other message for the coaches that are starting out there. If you try to model yourself, if you try to be the next Tony Robbins or the next, um, you know, Lewis Howes or whoever, it's not going to work. 
you have to be you and you have to put yourself out there, right? You have to at least introduce yourself. You have to be willing to not care what other people think about you. Oh, right? that's a big one. And yeah. it's huge. And that is, that is definitely the hardest lesson to learn. And I have not learned it fully yet either. I know I haven't. But if you can at least start to chip away at that and care a little bit less what people think and just to your point with your videos, my videos, that is me. There's no script. It's just talking, right? And sometimes yeah. people like it and sometimes people don't. And that's, but I'm at a point where that's okay. Yeah. Because it's not, I'm not going to not do them anymore because one video didn't get as many views or likes or, or whatever, you know, but if you can get to that place, then you're on to something. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is you're going to do a lot of videos where you're going to have three views. For right. you. You're going to do a Facebook live and there are going to be six people watching and yeah. some days it's going to be one and some days it's going to be 500. Right. Uh, and you know, how do you get to the 500? You go through a lot of the ones and the twos. <laughs> you know, you yeah, just gotta, exactly. And 100%. Uh, yeah, if you, you, you have to recognize that the people who don't like, people don't like the way I speak sometimes. Oh, you're too powerful. You're too this, you're too that. Okay. Fine. I'm okay with that. You're not my client. Right. <laughs> there are people who can't get enough of it. Right. Yeah. And they, I, you know, I went to a, a seminar in London and I was speaking there and a guy came up to me and he said, I have your CD and I listen to it in the car every morning. Wow. And I'm like, did you realize it was a sales presentation, right? <laughs> <laughs> he says, yeah, at the end there's a sales presentation, but the content is so good. Oh my God. I love motivates that. Me. And it's like, you listen to it again and again and again. Amazing. It's incredible. You know, so yeah. you don't know when you got to keep putting it out there and you got to get over, over this idea that I'm going to do one video one time, I'm going to get a million views because I saw somebody else do that. It's going to go viral. I know that's the other thing that's a bunch of BS, right? If it was good enough, it would go viral. That is so not true. There are so many amazing light workers out there who are putting out incredible content. And to your point, it might not get a lot of views, but it's because people might not feel like going deep that day. Maybe they don't want to learn that day. Maybe they want to yeah. numb out with something else that really doesn't something that just entertain me. <laughs> they want to laugh. <laughs> exactly. Or it's not going to make them do any sort of self-evaluation. And that's fine too. But to your yeah. point, then if you only have, you know, five viewers on your Facebook Live, it's because the other people, you know, are busy just like trying to get through the day. And that's fine too. We have no idea what they're going through. Um, but I think authenticity, and that was one thing that was really hard for me to learn in the beginning too, was I just, I thought I'll just be a mix of these couple of people. And it's, you know, that's a great way to waste a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, I redid my website probably 18 times. Like it was just, Good for you you know, but it, the copy wasn't, it wasn't me. Yeah. And it's not how I talk. And it was stiff pictures, but this is me in a denim shirt. I mean, this is just... This is who I am. I'm not going to sit here in some black dress or a black coat or trying to be somebody else because that's not who I am. And if you don't, if you're not, you know, picking up when I'm laying down, then that's cool too. But we're just not going to work together. And right. that's fine too because somebody else out there is your, is your better fit. It is. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a hard lesson for a lot of people to learn because they, they think they have to be like somebody else who's gotten a lot of traction. The, really, the yeah. reason that they got a lot of traction is because they're being authentic. And the exactly. moment you try to be someone you're not, you're inauthentic. Yeah. And, and when people you can that, smell it from a mile away. You up on it and there's no way to yes. fix it. You yeah. know, you either care about people or you don't. And if you don't, that's fine too. Go get a job where you can hide behind your email and never have to talk to anybody. Right. That's fine. Absolutely. You know, you need and, I, too. <laughs> and I think too, you know, with the boom, right, of so of the coaching industry just still right. exploding. And a lot of people who might feel stuck, they've come and they've said, well, I thought about being a coach. And I say, okay, well, why? And they think, well, it's just because I can have the laptop lifestyle and I can do And I'm like, ooh, sweetie, <laughs> if you're not really in this, like if you're not really, and they've never I'm worked with a coach this. before. Yeah. yeah. I, and I'm like, so you're not going to, this is not going to end up, end well for you. You're going to waste time. And, a lot, and unfortunately there are people out there that can happily take your money and they can't perform. Exactly. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, you're in this cul-de-sac of being unfulfilled again. Yeah. So like it really does bar a little bit more examination, but I think the people who are probably, you know, watching and listening are people who really do feel a calling to this and aren't worried about the money. The money comes. It, it really does. And that was another lesson that was incredibly hard for me to learn because I had walked away from such amazing cushy salaries and expense report, expense accounts and all this stuff. But 
when I really started to trust that the money would show up as long as I was authentically me and my intentions were good was when it really did. It really just started like, Oh shoot. Okay. Stop, stop, stop. (laughs) Like I can't, I can't handle all these clients. Um, but so, you know, I would say that's my message too, is that if you feel freaked out about the money or, you know, something to the point where you're trying to copy somebody else, it's, it's not going to end well. And it's really better just to stay the course right? And be you. Exactly. And if you have something of value to offer, and I know a lot of the coaches out there do, and they they, um, really want to authentically do that and really are interested in helping you. And when they're on a coaching call with you, they tune everything else out and they're just 110% focused on you. People are going to pay you. They're going to want that. They, right. People want to be heard. We're just not heard today. You know, it's just one of the things that uh, in our society is people just don't hear us. Right. Know? We've got our own would, stuff going on. Don't talk to me. <laughs> right. And I would say to your point too, when you say they'll pay you and they will pay you a lot. I mean, that's the other thing too. You know, I, everybody has their own pricing, but what was really hard for me to do too was to have a high end coaching business. It felt like, well, I can't ask them for that much money. You know, it's not. But then at the end of, you know, once I started getting results and some of my clients are making twenty, thirty thousand dollars higher salaries than when we start and you can't put a price on their happiness and all of this stuff, then it started to feel like, okay, it didn't feel like icky, right? Like right. in the mm-hmm. beginning, it feels, it is, it's an energy transfer, right? Of this money. But at the same time, you know, I would tell them that like, if you don't have any skin in the game, if it's not a little bit, painful for you to invest, like to Tony's seminars, things like that, you're not going to show up. You're not going to dedicate yourself and we're not going to get the results that you want. Exactly. So I would say that's another thing. You know, if you have clients that are coming to you, but whatever you're (laughs) charging, if you know, you have to feel like you're worth it. Right. And sometimes you have to do a few to start building up your confidence as a coach. But then once you know that you've got you know, the goods and you can back it up and you can over deliver for people and give them incredible results, then you will start getting those clients who come to you. And even if they don't, you know, have the financial means at the time, they will figure it out. They will figure it out to your point. If they're in enough pain, they will figure it out. And all you have to focus on is being 100% undistracted and committed to helping them. And then all of that, you know, worry about charging and money coming, those things will start to get, no yeah. they will dissolve 100%. Yeah. I had a client hire me um, just before Christmas and uh, I said, where'd you find out about me? He says, oh, I was at a seminar you spoke at. And he mentioned the seminar and I'm looking, 2004, 2005. Oh my God, really? And he's like, yeah, I read every one of your emails and I watch your podcast. And it's <laughs> like, you just you know, the timing was right, but now it's right to hire you. And, and he hired me and he came here and he spent a whole day with me. And wow. um, at the end of the day, he says, I got my money's worth in the first hour. Amazing. And that's what I'm sure he did. That's what you live for. You know, it's like you, you, you live for making those magical moments for people and then the money really doesn't matter because it's like he got his money worth. He was happy. He walked out of here singing and dancing because I had solved a problem that he could not solve yeah. any other way. And he'd been to other coaches and he'd been to other trainings and, and he couldn't get it solved and I helped him solve it. That's Incredible. And to your point with that too, with like him saying he got his money in the first hour, I've had similar experiences a couple weeks in. They're like, I've already gotten my money's worth. I'm like, that's great. So let's 10x your dream. We're just going to keep going because we still have time. And then you really do start to get them raising their standards and dreaming even bigger, which is like so fulfilling, right? Once you've crushed it, halfway through, and then you have everything else is gravy, right? They've, Mm -hmm. They've achieved what they wanted to. Um, And then they, they start to reach higher. They can go even further. And the other thing too, is like, it is scary for people to invest in themselves. Um, Especially when you have bills or you might have children or whatever, you know, anytime I spent a dollar on my business, it was like, well, that's tuition for the girls and that's this. And what could I be doing with that? But at the end of the day, it was like, again, I'm modeling for them, but like, well, we spend money on college and we do all this other stuff, right? To invest in ourselves. And then we're just going to cut it off. Like at 21, that's it. There's, you know, we're not going to go to seminars. We're not going to read books. We're not going to hire coaches to help us in these times in our lives, which, you know, a lot of times to your point, you have to kind of paint the picture of if you don't do this, right? how much is it going to cost you then? You know, yeah. your relationships, your career, not just financial costs, but like, what is this going to cost you? So I think to your point, 
obviously, you know, you find the coach that works for fits with you. But if you really believe that you're going to get your money's worth, then you will. It's not the coach that fails you. Sometimes it's the client that fails themselves. Right. You know? and, and the coach, if the coach is talking more than the client, they're doing something wrong. Exactly. You know, that's a, that's a big one for a lot of coaches because it's like, I've got the answer. I've got the answer. I want to give it to you. No, you don't want to give it to them because right. they won't hear it. They won't. Exactly. So that's what I do when I, when I teach coaches how to close and how to sell is really painting the, the picture of what does this cost you if, if you don't take care of this issue? Right. Let's look at it six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, in all different areas of your life. And they get to the point and they go, you know what, I can't, I, I don't want to go down that road. And they right. paint the picture for themselves. And they then we do. say, okay, let's try, let's try this. Let's try taking a different road. Now, if this were solved, what do things look like? And they yeah. start looking at it that way and they go, yeah, I guess I got to solve this. And then it doesn't matter what you charge. It really doesn't because the value is so high for them at that point. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Money doesn't matter. 100%. Couldn't yeah. agree more. So you got a book coming up. Tell us. Well, I, I have one um, that's coming out. It's called Manifesting Through the Mess. And it's, it's kind of like I just like a, love, 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 love your title. <laughs> yeah. It's about, um, I really like to kind of condense all of these wonderful self-help books that I've read and the nuggets that I've taken for people who are kind of in the mess of life, right? And they might not have time to read these books. So I kind of pull the wisdom from them, almost like kind of like a cliff notes of them. And then how I applied it to my life and how it changed my life. Awesome. Um, so I don't have a, a hard date on that yet. I wish I did, but definitely feel free to go to my website and then subscribe and then you'll get any little alerts that pop up. Um, but I also have an online uh, course that's coming up and this is around um, using social media to land your dream job. So really similar, right? It's getting clarity on what you want and then it's getting super tactical on how to Take these things that could just kind of be a mindless drain for you, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, and taking that and making it super productive so that you can get unstuck, right? And you can start to explore other career paths. And not only that, but start to evaluate uh, your life, your relationships, and things that, you know, either could or could not be your passion that you should follow. Awesome. And that course is available on ElizabethPearson.com. Is. find it there okay yeah. I'm gonna put and there's resume things. help there's all sorts of stuff there oh good yeah yeah your website is really nice you've done a nice job I know you have eight tries or 18 tries to get it there but uh, I think you're very close to where you want to be right now with it it feels good yes and I do have a freebie too oh yes freebie. all of your listeners I know everybody I love a good freebie so again it's on elizabethpearson.com um, slash freebies so if you go <laughs> there there is a, um, a document, it's a money mindset cheat sheet. So similar to what we were talking about, kind of getting over some mindset blocks, um, a lot of clients that I work with come to me and they have this kind of poverty mentality, right? This mentality of lack. Uh, they're kind of focused on things that they don't have and just day-to-day -day things that um, you can do to really start to get your mindset of a but towards focus more towards abundance, right? right? And how to bring it into your life. And these wonderful tips are pulled from amazing teachers like Dan Locke and Ray Dalio and even our good friend Tony Robbins, things like this. And I just kind of came up with a seven step cheat sheet and it's super fun. There's just exercises in there too. That's and amazing. Yeah. And like last week I did a video on, it was the, the wallet process, which Aber and mm -hmm. Abraham yep. and Esther talk about. I remember reading that a long time ago and I'm like, yay, somebody find a video on it. <laughs> the hundred dollars, right? Get a hundred dollar yep. bill, put it in your wallet and then imagine spending it on over and over again. Over and, over again. Yep. and it was so funny. Five days later, Robert, I um, had two $100 bills show up in the mail to me. No joke. Like it, and I took a picture of it for my Instagram. <laughs> I said, it's proof, but I believed it was coming. I spent that hundred dollars and it was so funny. The feedback, all these people are like, it's this is fun. You can make it lighthearted. It doesn't yeah. have to be so heavy, but if you can kind of get it's out of it. It's better if it's lighthearted. There's yeah. more energy in the lighthearted than the heavy. Right. If you yeah. say, wouldn't it be great if, right. Yeah. Versus this has to happen at this time. And that's kind of like with everything, right. For your entrepreneurial goals, all of this stuff, if you can take a more positive, lighthearted approach to it, it can be fun. And then I think the world is always out there ready to show off. And it's like, send me something you want done. Right. And I'm like, see how many hundred dollar bills I can get. And then five days later, two of them show up in the mail. <laughs> That's amazing.
I mean, I looked at my husband. I was almost like teary eyed. I'm like, are you kidding me with this? And he was, he was laughing. <laughs> Who sends money through the mail today, you know? <laughs> right. But I was like, you know what? I got to, I got to put this on the cheat sheet, like this kind of stuff. So it's just, it's fun. It's lighthearted, but I really try to put lots of really valuable free content on there. So this is, this is not a sales pitch. You could do whatever you want, but if you just want to start getting some fun content, um, you know, you can go on there and subscribe. And your coaching is uh, waiting list only at this point. It is, but I still, you know, I tell people to book a discovery call and I do those because I feel like that, you know, I don't, I don't advertise. So a lot of it's referral. And I think that people who come to my site or book a call are somehow universally guided to me. And so I love to honor that and I'll do those calls with them. And sometimes, you know, it, things manifest, right? If you really want to get in, it's amazing. Sometimes people are just wrapping up and then a spot opens up. It's, you know, if you, if you yeah. want it to happen, it will happen. If it's mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we need more of you. Uh, we need more of you. <laughs> we need more of you out there for sure. Absolutely. We, we uh, just like, we can't get enough. You know, it's like um, when your book is done, yes. um, I'm going to have you back. Wonderful. And I hopefully we'll have fewer technical issues. <laughs> we won't I'll do it during your career. I'll sit there with you. We'll drink coffee as we. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be absolutely awesome. Um, all right. Anything else you want to leave us with before we end today? No, I just want to say that I'm grateful to you for giving me this platform and to everybody out there that's listening. If you are, there is a reason that you've connected with Robert. There's a reason why you're listening to this today. And whatever your gut's telling you, I always just tell people to try to honor that and yes. listen to it and take some sort of action. Awesome. Well, I'm, I feel blessed to have had this opportunity to spend time with you because uh, uh, I'm just so impressed by what you're doing and this has been just so much fun. I definitely want to do it again and uh, maybe we should think about doing a course together or something. Yeah. There's, there's, there's some sure. synergy there that probably needs to be explored a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I told you that was going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for listening. I've got a quick message from our sponsor today. I want to make sure that we give uh, that appropriate attention as well. Marketingthunder.com is a place where you can go and learn from some amazing experts, people like Fred Gleek and Tara Alamany and uh, Dr. Tiana Conte and uh, Jeanette Joy Fisher, to name a few. You see Warren Whitlock, Brian Basilico, Terry Levine. We've got a lot of people, new people coming on all the time. They uh, were brought in to do what I call mini classes. So what happens is we got them into Marketing Thunder and you can sign up here. It's really quickly, easy to log in. And when you're on the inside, you can see there are multiple uh, sections you can go to. And we brought them in to do mini courses on coaching and marketing, information marketing, new media, list building, publishing, uh, even success and motivation. And there's some bonus classes in there from me. If you're a coach, you're going to love that because it's going to teach you how to grow your coaching practice as well. So go ahead on over to marketingthunder.com. Find out more, sign up for your trial. It's just $1, seven days of full access. If you like it, it's just $97 for the entire year. And uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you for watching. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again next week when we do this again with another amazing guest.